The Memphis Grizzlies have just traded Steven Adams to the Rockets for Victor Oladipo and three second round picks. This strategic move by the Grizzlies could pay off big time, but it will also likely turn the Houston Rockets into a powerhouse, making the Rockets one of the most dangerous teams next season. Hey what's happening everyone, this is Swish Culture. While seemingly innocuous, this move helps out both teams. Neither Steven Adams nor Victor Oladipo have seen any time on the floor this season, so there will be no immediate impact. The Grizzlies use this move to gather assets for a future trade, meanwhile the Rockets get a piece to compete for a spot in a tough Western Conference next season. So how will this move help both teams? You're about to get swished, so be sure to like the video and subscribe to Switch Culture for the most analytical and entertaining NBA content on the planet. So without further delay, let's get to it. While Adams is a high level role player that can fortify a team's front court with his massive size and rebounding, he's had a troubling knee injury that required surgery and big men typically don't do well with those types of injuries. That being said, he is expected to make a full recovery. Adams right now is in the first year of a two year extension that he signed with the Grizzlies back in October of 2022. It was right after that signing in January that he injured his knee. They tried rehabbing with stem cell injections but his knee wasn't responding. Eventually they gave up and decided to go with surgery ending his 2022-23 season and with a 12 month recovery timeline causing him to miss the entirety of the 2023-2024 season. It's safe to say the Grizzlies didn't get what they were hoping for out of Steven Adams and despite being a great fit for the Grizzlies if healthy they decided they're going to cut their losses and try their luck on getting a talented pickup in the offseason. Considering John Morant's season ending shoulder injury they will likely be picking in the lottery in this year's draft. A pick they can likely package with Oladipo, the three second round picks and maybe others to try to swing a trade. For Memphis, they currently have Jaron Jackson Jr. in the front court, as well as Xavier Tillman, Santi Aldama, and Matthew Hurt, a floor stretching big whom they just signed under hardship. Hurt played well in his debut, dropping 10 points in 23 minutes and going 2 for 3 from distance. While I don't expect Memphis to rely heavily on Hurt in their playoff push next year, they could sign talent at the small forward and center positions this offseason. Vucevic, Walker Kessler, and Jakob Pertl could all be considered, however a player like Kessler likely fits their timeline better than any of the other options. Kessler is averaging 8 points and 7 rebounds in 23 minutes. If the Grizzlies want more veteran experience or a high level center however, they might go for Vuce instead. A lineup of Morant, Smart, Bain, Jaron Jackson, and Nikola Vucevic would make a decisive playoff run. Personally, I think Jonas Valanciunas would top all these options, but since he's going into free agency, the Grizzlies would only need to clear cap space to sign him and not acquire assets. With Oladipo's contract expiring this summer, this allows them to open up that space and could they possibly welcome Valanciunas back to Memphis where he played the last two years prior to being traded to the New Orleans Pelicans? Now Oladipo has been back and forth to Houston and actually didn't play a single game since the last time he was traded. His last actual game was for the Miami Heat before he went down with an injury back in April of 2023. He was subsequently traded to OKC with two future second rounders for cash. OKC then traded him to the Rockets for Kevin Porter Jr. amid allegations of domestic abuse, which KPJ is yet to play a single game since those allegations came out. KPJ did manage to reach a plea deal so he won't see any jail time. But it is hard to picture when and where he'll get any playing time when he does return to the NBA, who will likely be meting out their own punishment. During the offseason and after the trade, Oladipo underwent surgery and has been recovering since. So the Rockets with Oladipo sitting in recovery and with no plans to put him on the roster considering they have Amon Thompson, Cam Whitmore, Dylan Brooks and Reggie Bullock for death at shooting guard behind Jalen Green would only benefit from moving him. Now the Rockets already have a veteran center in Jeff Green and a starting and budding star in Alperin Shangun. What use could they possibly have for Adams? 
There are a couple of great opportunities here for the Rockets with Adams. The first is that Adams could immediately usurp Jeff Green as the backup center behind Shangun. The Rockets do have a team option on Jeff Green whose ability to space the floor likely gives him some staying power despite the signing of Adams. Both players bring something completely different to the table. This gives the Rockets a solid rim protector and one of the best rebounders in the game off the bench. Adams has a career average of 8.6 points and 11.5 rebounds per game in 27 minutes. Alternatively, in limited spurts, they could run a twin tower lineup that includes both Shangun and Adams to counter a team like Minnesota who have been pretty dominant this season. The more I think about it, the more this seems plausible. While Shangun isn't shooting threes at nearly the same rate or proficiency as Carl Anthony Towns, his rapid development might allow him to play outside of the paint with Adams down low. The Rockets are currently ranked 11th in the West and with the continued development of Jalen Green, Jabari Smith Jr. and Alperin Shangun could be looking to make a playoff run next season and a tough physical presence in the paint could help provide the boost they need to get back to relevance. This is still no guarantee however as the Western Conference is a dogfight with plenty of tough teams. Steph Curry and LeBron James led teams aren't even currently ranked for playoff in these standings and this is without a competitive Memphis Grizzlies who look to revamp this year by giving John Morant additional help. Morant had come back and led the Grizzlies to a 6-3 record this season before going back down with injury and the team is clearly much better with him in the lineup. You factor that in with other young teams like the Thunder advancing, the fact that the West also has KD, that is, the three best players of this past decade all on different teams in the same conference, means that the Rockets will need consistency from Jalen Green and a third year leap from Smith Jr. Can I even use his last name? There are two other Smith Juniors in the league. The interesting mix of young talent and veterans could actually be successful for the Rockets unlike it was for the Warriors. The major difference of course being that the Rockets are focused on their young players with no championship expectations and rightfully so. Earlier this year, I started working on a top 100 video and all three of the Rockets young players made the cut. If they reach their potential, next season should be entertaining if you're a Rockets fan. This is of course if Steven Adams comes back fully healthy. If for some reason he doesn't, then the Rockets franchise will be stuck with an injured player for a year as this could be the start of the end for Steven Adams. Even though he's still young at just 30 years old, he's still a 250 pound human being in a 7 foot tall body recovering from a knee injury. Let me know if you think this moves the needle for the Rockets and how much. Post your thoughts in the comments below, but don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on all your notifications so you don't miss any of my latest uploads. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Swish.